Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's leaves hath all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declined, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. One day I wrote her name upon the strand, but came the waves and washed it away. Again I wrote it with a second hand, but came the tide and made my pains his prey. Vain man, said she, that doest in vain essay, a mortal thing so to immortalize, for I myself shall like to this decay, and eke my name be wiped out likewise. Not so, quoth I, let baser things devise, to die in dust, but you shall live by fame. My verse, your virtues rare, shall eternize. And in the heavens write your glorious name, where when as death shall all the world subdue, our love shall live and later life renew. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. The repetition of so in these lines conveys the poet's confidence that as long as people live, their love will remain immortal through his readers. My verse, your virtues rare, shall eternize. His words will allow their love to live on forever. These two poems are traditional sonnets. They are 14 lines in length, which is relatively short. This brief nature emphasizes the brevity of life. Both poems use the rhythm iambic pentameter, which mimics the human heartbeat. Dee dum, dee dum. This signifies love and the fact that the heartbeat will eventually cease. Nature is used to portray the cycle of life and the possibility of immortality. And summer's leaves hath all too short a date. This exemplifies summer's fleeting nature and emphasizes the shortness of both beauty and life. One day I wrote her name upon the strand, but came the waves and washed it away. The waves serve as a metaphor for the life cycle. As he attempts to write her name in the sand, he hopes it will last forever, but it is washed away. Classic Volta! Classic Volta! Classic Volta! A Volta serves as a turn of thought or argument. In Shakespearean or English sonnets, Voltas occur before the final couplet. But thy eternal summer shall not fade. The use of a classic volta allows the speaker to shift from discussing a summer day's mortal qualities to explaining the immortality of his lover's beauty. This shift is even more shocking because it is rumored that Shakespeare wrote it for a man. Not so, quoth I, let baser things devise. The turn of thought in this poem is displayed by the speaker's shift from discussing the temporary nature of life to discussing the remembrance of their love. This shift shows that love is the speaker's main priority. Both sonnets have end stops in almost every line. In sonnet 18, the end stops emphasize that all natural things cease to exist. In sonnet 75, the end stops emphasize that time is the limiting factor of life.
100% original footage, filmed and edited by Sarah and Miranda. Thanks for watching. watching.